Hey everyone, Chang here. This is the skill building video series. For today's video, we're going to talk about completing the square. Now, what is completing the square? Well, every time we work with quadratic equation, it's usually in this kind of form. This is known as standard form. It's wonderful in the sense that you can plug it into a quadratic formula because you have your A, B, and C, and so on and so forth. The only problem with standard form is that when you're asked to graph it, there's really not much information to go by, right? There's no specific special point that we can work with. There's not this behavior that we can automatically assume. There's really not much we can go by in this form. So what we do is we use the technique of completing the square to actually change this form into something that we actually like a lot more. Once we change it, it's going to look like this. Y equals X minus H squared plus K. Our H and K is going to be the vertex of the quadratic equation. Now, well, you guys can guess, if it gives us a special point, this is basically called vertex form. Vertex form. Okay, because every time we graph a quadratic equation, it looks like a parabola, so it's gonna look like a U-shape. It could be up, facing up, facing down, but it's gonna look like a U-shape. Now, the vertex itself is basically the midpoint of where this parabola is. If we can find the vertex, we already know something about the parabola, at least where it starts, right? From there, every point afterwards is basically equal distance apart forming this U-shape right here. So this form actually helps us graph a lot easier than this form. That's why we have completing the square. So we're gonna practice the actual skill of completing the square. So for our first equation, we have this, y equals x squared minus six x plus two. Now, before I even start working on this, I gotta show you the skill of completing the square. If you're familiar with it, completing the square actually has a formula. Y equals x squared plus bx plus parentheses to b over two squared. Okay, this looks very scary. The reason they write it like this is because basically if you can get your quadratic equation into this format, right, you can actually factor everything out and it will always be x plus b over two squared, right? This is by definition what is called a perfect square, right? Everything is inside the parentheses squared. Well, that's why we have completing the square. The format of this being able to change to this, that's completing the square. The problem is that a lot of the quadratic functions, the quadratic equations that we see, they're not in perfect square. Look at this, for example. If we follow this formula with this, our b is negative six. If this number is gonna be b over two squared, then it's a perfect square, but clearly that's not the case because if you have negative six divided by two and times itself, negative six divided by two is just negative three. You multiply it by itself, that's gonna be nine, right? Negative three times negative three is nine. Well, this is not nine, so this is not a perfect square. A lot of them are not. But we can use this concept to help us change this right here, our standard form, into vertex form, which allows us to, well, graph. So, I'm gonna start off with this. Now, I've seen two ways that people actually go about completing the square using this kind of, uh, or working with um, quadratic equations, right? One of them is just they, they complete the square all on one side of the equation, they don't even touch this side, and that's great, that's lovely. They're super organized. Me, I'm not very organized. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving things around just to force myself to stay organized. So. I'm gonna start off with getting rid of the two, and I'm gonna show you why. First, in order to get rid of the two, I'm gonna subtract two on both sides, right? What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Y minus two equals X squared minus six X. The reason for that is because now I can see clearly our B, right? Well, if I wanna complete the square, I need to have a B over two squared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna divide it by two, so our negative six divided by two is gonna give negative three, all right? So I'm gonna add a negative three squared here, all right? But I gotta do the same here, because guess what? Remember, this is an equation. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. I can't just randomly create and add numbers without doing it to the other side, or the equal sign won't hold. So, this is gonna be plus a negative three squared. Great, 
So, let's just continue. Well, okay, this side's just gonna be y minus two plus negative three squared is just nine. This side, I love, because guess what? This right here, now we know because we create it, right? It's a perfect square. That's our skill of completing squares. So instead of writing this out, I can actually write this out. So it's gonna be x plus b over two, which is our negative three. So I'm just gonna do subtract three squared. All right? so that's pretty cool. Well, if I combine these guys right here, negative two and nine, that's just gonna be what, seven? So it's gonna be y plus seven equals x minus three squared. Well, at this point right here, hopefully you guys can see it. I'm just going to rewrite it here just in case. y plus 7 equals x minus 3 squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 7 on this side and this side, right? What you do to one side, you must do to the other. This cancels. Now I have y equals x minus 3 squared minus 7. And this right here is our vertex form, which eventually we can use to graph out the actual quadratic equation. All right, so for our second problem, we have y equals x squared minus 3x plus 5. Now, if you guys can see it right away, yes, it looks a little scary because guess what? This doesn't divide by 2 very well, but the overall concept is still the same. Now, as I mentioned in the previous problem, what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna get rid of the five because I don't want the five right there, it's messing me up. So I'm gonna subtract five here and I'm gonna subtract five here. So basically what I have now is gonna be y minus five equals x squared minus three x. Now, this is our b according to our formula for completing the square. What we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this by two and multiply it by itself. So right here, we're just gonna look at what it is. Negative three divided by two we really don't want to change it into decimals if we don't have to. We could just keep it like that, right? So that's just going to be neg negative 3 over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on this side negative 3 over 2 squared, and I'm going to add here negative 3 over 2 squared, right? So what we have here is just going to be y minus 5 plus, and if I really want to square it out, that's just going to be, what, 9 over 4 equals this right here is our perfect square, right? From this format, we can write it into this format. So instead of x squared minus 3x plus square, uh, I guess parentheses negative 3 over 2 squared, what this is, is is now just x minus 3 over 2 or plus, you know, uh, 3 plus a negative 3 over 2 squared. There it is, right? Now we can combine these guys right here. And basically what we have is gonna be y, and then this is gonna be negative five. We want it the same denominator, so it's gonna be negative, or subtract 20 over four plus nine over four equals, and we have our complete square right here. Okay, there it is. All right, cool. So we combine these guys. Basically what we have is just gonna be y, and this is a negative 20 over four plus nine over four, which is gonna give us uh, negative 11 over 4 equals x minus 3 over 2 squared. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to add this on the other side. So add 11 over 4 plus 11 over 4. And so that gives us y equals x minus 3 over 2 squared well, plus 11 over 4. So this whole thing right here is our vertex form. All right, now this third one is slightly different. The reason so is because guess what? Our formula, x squared is always positive. In this case, x squared is negative. So what do we do? Well, there's really not much we can do. In this situation, we just wanna change it so that it ends up being positive and we can just work it out. What we can do in this case is we're gonna multiply this whole thing right here by negative one. That means, oh, that's the, okay, well, a giant dot then. By negative one, and then we're gonna multiply this by negative one right here, a uh, giant dot, okay? My x's and multiplication sign doesn't look all that great. All right, so if I multiply y by negative one, basically we have a negative y, and in this whole thing right here 
it's just gonna be x squared. Remember, when you multiply the negative one, you gotta multiply it all throughout, right? So instead of a positive 5x, now it's just gonna be subtract 5x, and instead of a positive 11, it's gonna be subtract 11. So this will be the formula we're working with, or the equation we're working with. So we're just gonna do completing the squared, same thing. I'm gonna move the 11 to one side, right? So I'm gonna add 11 right here, and I'm gonna add 11 right here. So basically what I have now is gonna be negative y plus 11 equals x squared minus 5x, okay? Well, in this case, here's our b. I'm gonna divide it by two and multiply it by itself. So negative five divided by two, I mean, once again, we don't really have to change it to decimals if we don't want to. I'd rather it be a fraction. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna add negative five over two squared. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. So negative five over two squared right here, okay? And now, this right here is just gonna be negative y plus 11 plus, and then if I square it all out, that's just gonna be 25 over four equals, and this right here is our completed square. This format right here, that's gonna be just basically x minus five over two squared, or if you want x plus negative five over two, the whole thing squared. So this is what we have. We're gonna combine these guys right here so that it's easier to work with. So basically right now we have negative y, was it plus 11 over four? Well, I mean, it needs to be over four, so that's 44 over four, right? Plus 25 over four equals, and then we have our perfect square right here. Okay, and then we add those guys together. It's not looking very pretty, but we'll see. So what is that? 44 plus 25 is 69. 69 over four equals x minus five over two squared. So we're gonna subtract this on both sides to move it over again. 69 over four, subtract 69 over four. So we have negative y equals x minus five over two squared minus 69 over four, which you can sort of simplify or, or change to a mixed fraction so that's easier. Now, here's the thing. We're not really done because once again, we now have a negative sign. So originally we multiplied by negative one to change it. We're just gonna change it back, right? There is a shortcut, easier way to do this. I wouldn't say easier, but then a faster way of doing this. But the reason I went through all this is because I wanna stay organized. It's so easy to make a mistake by jumping steps. So if I do all this, I can guarantee you at the end, I haven't violated any rules. The final format is still this gonna be valid, right? So I'm gonna multiply by negative one and multiply by negative one. And so basically now what I have is gonna be y equals negative on the outside of x minus five over two squared. And instead of minus 69 over four, it's gonna be plus 69 over four. So this down here, hopefully you guys can see it, is basically our vertex form. Now, for this final problem, let's see if you guys can follow along.
Thank you for watching this video on completing a square and how to convert standard form into vertex form. See you in the next video.